أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول ومن أمري منكم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنا عبدك العجيز الضعيف المسكين الظالم الجهل but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah we've said before that the last chapter in life is echoing on my… Now the Hello? Yeah. yeah I can hear my sound coming to me. InshaAllah I'll never turn the sound on this one down. InshaAllah the last chapter in our life is the most important and how we'll be judged through this last chapter and what Allah gives to us of the ease that of all the difficulties that can come to us and all the hardships that visit us and all the testing that have been given. The most important chapter of our lives is the last chapter but the majority of people don't live their life thinking about the last chapter. A good author, good writer actually writes the last chapter and makes the book to reach to it. <laughs> they don't take life day by day and, and hoping that uh, the end of the book will be good and end of our life will be good. But we take the last chapter and write that that we want. Ya Rabbi I want to be in your Divinely Kingdom. Ya Rabbi I want to be under the intercession and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi I want your goodness, I want all your rahmah, I want all these blessings. When we write that chapter in our life and say, no that's the book that I want, that's all that I want. I want to be in that association with Ahlul Bayt, I want to be in the association of the Holy Companions, I want to be in the association of Allah. Ya Rabbi this is my final chapter in life to reach to that reality. Then Allah inspire your heart and our hearts then make it happen. Write a book that's going to reach to that reality. And that's the difference between jahal people and rijal. Rijal, those whom are in a path of manhood or maturity in Allah's way because it's not men or women, they're both reaching towards maturity. That when they reach towards maturity, their life is serious for them and they have to reach to that final chapter. Every chapter in their life is to reach to that final. So that every day they wake and say that, how am I going to draw closer to Allah's presence? Well it's very easy, by drawing close to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why all the teaching. Allah, tell them if they want my love then to come to you Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem. <coughs> so when we want the love of Allah Allah then teaching for us, draw close in your character, your khuluq and your akhlaq and all your manners draw close to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And so alhamdulillah lives is is written, every day we write a chapter of our book that, did I do that, did I accomplish that, <coughs> did I live a life spreading that, working towards that reality and that's all that we pray. We pray that Allah grant us every day to write a chapter of the book of our life that draws us to our finale so that we live that life. We we eat and breathe that life and that Allah make everything to be blessed and dressed to be granting. Allah grants the du'a of His servants. 
so that they ask for it but they live a life to reach towards that reality. So every time we, we are involved and see life and death and death situations, it always brings back into our heart why we're doing what we're doing, why we struggle for the last chapter, why we, we didn't do the things that all the other people with freedom did. We didn't achieve what those people achieved of dunya and how dunya by its nature is deceiving. Its purpose is to deceive people to think that it lives forever. Dunya comes into the eyes of people and makes it think that all your fun will be forever. And maut and death has a great awakening. That when people go to a funeral, participate in the washing, participate in all these things that they look as if like a, a poison against their dunya, attack and destruction of their dunya and that's why it is recommended to go to the grave on Fridays, go to the people whom passed away and, and you need to wash for them, go to all of these things to remind us that death is right there waiting for us and as a result it puts a poison on your dunya and takes away the deceit and the deception of dunya that for all they struggle and all the licenses they, they fought to get and all the things they fought to buy and all the things they struggle to have, in the end it's of absolute no value. And everything that left going to be fought over by the family. Who's going to get what and what shoes they're going to grab and run out of the room and all this disgusting stuff of dunya. But in the end that one lying there, all the dunya they had is not going to help them. And that's when is the learning and that's when the, the reality of why we do what we do. That you know people are so busy building their dunya and buying the stocks of dunya and buying the investment. These people when they sit together they talk about, oh this investment in 10 years going to give me this, this investment in 20 years going to give me this. And then you look at the dead and say that all that investment is for nothing, it's not going to help you where you're going. Allah is not looking to that and the only investment that if they had listened and bought and had an eternal share was the investment in your akhirah. You know the, the sadaqat jariyah, the donations you give, the charity you give, the masjid you build, the, the, te the, the, the teaching you give to your children, that read Qur'an, that pray, do all these things a day will come, I will die and your actions will be saving me in the grave. Your prayers will be dressing and blessing me, this is my greatest investment. If they thought like that they would have invested everything on those children to be pious and so that all that they could achieve of their piety would be paying them for eternity. But because of material eyes they looked at which stock was better, which bonds were better, which property was better and has absolutely no value now. And that's, that's the stark reality that Prophet described for us. Imagine the investments of eternity, that the, the feeding of people, that the water that people drink will be paying you and dressing you. That's when the dead are sitting in the grave and they're astonished at what lights and blessings are coming to them and say, what is this from? Well, this is from these masjids that you did, these are from the people that you, feel, you fed. This is from the water that you gave, this is from the books and the knowledges that you spread, this is from the da'wah and the video and all the teachings that you've spread. These are what are flowing into your grave and dressing you for all of eternity. But their eyes are blinded by dunya and that's why Allah is the great equalizer is death. Mouth it immediately wipes everything off the table. You don't have to do da'wah anymore, you don't have to keep pushing and trying to pitch. It shows itself right there, look all of this just ended and all the servant has is their good deeds. And you pray that those good deeds dress you and bless you 
and pray that you had eternal investments. These blessings and dressings that would be flourishing and nourishing your grave and filling it with lights. We pray that Allah inspire us all to do good, to achieve, to do the, the things that have an eternal reality upon ourselves, upon our families, our children and our communities and not to be too deceived by the dunya and its image of looking and running for all of eternity. Dunya looks like it never ends. <coughs> the sadness of dunya is that it really doesn't care who lived today and who died today. It always is shining and has the illusion of everything great. And that deception is what is fooling insan and people. You know, yeah, it's not gonna happen to me, don't worry. And then when it happens to people whom you love and to our loved ones, it becomes a very sharp reminder that this is why we're struggling to reach towards our akhirah. This is why what we do for the way of Allah that's why these people sacrifice on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, throughout the week giving food, building wells, putting out videos, putting out all of these things so that our last chapter we can reach and have a beatific chapter in which Allah take every difficulty away. In the miracles that we see upon this path how somebody could have had a very difficult ending and Allah made it to be sped up, speed up so that no harm, no difficulty and the servant returned back with a gracious and beatific reality back into the presence of Allah We pray Allah make Make everything to be beatific and filled with light, inspire our hearts towards goodness inshaAllah. With this blessed month of Surat al Yaseen and the lights of Surat al Yaseen to dress this reality, dress this month, we pray that Allah grant us from the dressings of Surat al Yaseen and its immense blessings. That the fourth of the Sahabi for this month is Imam Ali from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Uthman or Imam Ali. And that Imam Ali to dress this month and the face of the month from the companion side and Imam Zain al Abideen is dressing the secret of the family side. With the immensity of these two Ahlul Bayt dressing this holy month and the immensity of lights and blessings that coming, we pray that Allah dress us and grant us a life in which to see this month and all of its dressings and blessings and Ursa Mubarak of Sultanul Awliya, Mawlana Abdul Qadir Jailani, Mawlana Muhammad, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi and Imam Ghazali, Muhammad Imam Ghazali, Imam Muhammad Ghazali and, and many others inshaAllah Allah address us from these, these Ursa Mubarak, these blessings and the dressings of this holy month inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.